Um, finally, we're going to move to the ophthalmoscope exam. The handheld ophthalmoscope is one of the more difficult tools to learn how to get to use. It's good to become familiar with um, the various dials uh, and adjustments that are available on the handheld ophthalmoscope. Certainly this ophthalmoscope has a wall mount and so it's attached by a cord and sometimes you have to be careful not to have the cord uh, come across and strike the patient and you need to support it a little bit. Most ophthalmoscopes will have um, a dial for um, focusing, they'll have a dial for dimming, and then they'll also have various um, lenses that come across the front with um, colors and uh, uh, diagrams as well as um, different sizes of lights. I usually use the larger size um, white light uh, to be able to see the pupil, um, or go see through the pupil uh, to the back um, of the retina. And so in order to perform this examination, we're going to stand just off to the side of the patient. And Mary, I'd like to ask you just again to look at the corner of the room. Okay. I'm going to come put my hand on her shoulder. You can also put a hand on the forehead with a thumb like this, both to steady and to gauge your distance. I'm going to hold the ophthalmoscope using two extended fingers like this. One is for focusing and the other is for resting on her cheek. And as I come in at about a 50 degree angle, I can have both eyes open as I come in. And when my finger strikes her cheek, I can rest it there, close my left eye, and then with my right eye, examine her right eye. I can focus in so that I can see the retina in a focus, and then begin to look at the blood vessels of the retina, the background of the retina, and then also towards the optic disc, optic nerve, and optic cup. Remember that as you're shining a bright light in someone's eye, they can have uh, a little bit of difficulty, and so sometimes it's good to pause in between eyes um, to give them a little break. Mary, I'm going to shift to the other side here. And again, one hand on your shoulder. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you to look towards the corner of the room. I'm going to come towards you here at um, about a 50 degree angle. And at this time, I'm going to switch over and I'm going to use my left hand um, and use my left eye to her left eye to avoid being uncomfortably in front of her during the exam. And I'm going to keep both eyes open until I come up against her cheek. And now I can um, easily guide and move my light to be sure I'm in the pupil. I can focus to be sure I've got the right focus. And then I observe the retinal blood vessels, background, and then also observing the optic nerve. Very good. Thank you, Mary. You're welcome. Remember when using your um, ophthalmoscope um, that you dim the lights in the room to allow the patient's pupil to constrict and you can see much better. Um, also, you need to become familiar with your handheld ophthalmoscope uh, and the various uh, uh, modes of operating. Sometimes these um, if they both are off, both lights won't work at the same time, only one will. Um, so become familiar with your equipment to make sure that you know how to use it in each uh, location that you'll be uh, performing examinations. Next we'll move to the ear examination and we'll start with inspection. Uh, Mary, would you be able to just lift your hair back mm -hmm. around your ears? Yep. Sometimes it's nice to have the patient move their hair um, for you, uh, just for their comfort. And I'm going to start just by inspecting the outer ear including palpating. I'm looking for lesions. I'm looking for pits. I'm looking for abnormalities of the skin uh, on the external ear. Um, and uh, everything looks symmetrical and normal. Next, we're going to test for auditory acuity, so just your ability to hear. Mm -hmm. And one method is just a whisper method. Um, so I'd like you to take your left hand, if you would, just plug one ear. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just going to whisper over on this side. 
Very good. And then we'll do the same on this side. I'm going to use a different word, though. Very good. Another method um, w that can be used is the finger rub method. Um, Mary, I just like uh, to close your eyes. And can you hear this? Mm hmm. Good. And how about this? No. Mary, do you have any hearing loss? I do. On which side? On my right mm -hmm. side. So these are both methods that you can help to try to determine if someone might have a little bit of loss of hearing. And uh, there are certainly more um, uh, sophisticated methods using um, audiograms uh, to detect hearing loss. Next, we'll move to the otoscopic examination. <clears throat> For this, we're going to use our otoscope with um, uh, light source. This is a handheld or a wall mount um, uh, instrument, and you have to be mindful of the cord, which is uh, going to get both in your way as well as the patient's way. And then I'm going to bring my uh, dimmer switch up to full and then put my speculum on. There's two different ways, there's several different ways to hold the, the, the otoscope. I'm going to show you two. One is a backhand method. And again, bringing the cord up and around, I'm going to hold um, the uh, otoscope this way and bring my hand up against um, her scalp. And Mary, I'm just going to um, gently tug on your ear um, as I look inside the canal. Tugging on the ear straightens the canal, and with my back hand, I have a nice control of the light source to be able to gently come into the canal, angling straight towards the eardrum. And while I'm here, I can see the canal as well as the landmarks of the eardrum. I'm going to be very careful as the um, skin of the canal is very sensitive, and you don't want to angle up or down forward or back, but just go straight down the middle. And I'm going to come around the front here, if I may, Mary, and this examine this side. And I'm going to use a different technique, holding, um, using two fingers extended as I did with the ophthalmoscope. And um, I'm going to put one hand um, up here just to kind of initiate the exam. And then I'm going to just bring my finger and put it right on your cheek here. And Mary, I'm going to pull on that ear again, if I may. Mm -hmm. This helps to straighten the canal up and forward. And then using that long finger on the cheekbone, I have good control of my light source as I enter into the canal, look for the patency of the canal, as well as the landmarks on the tympanic membrane. Again, gently coming out um, so as not to traumatize the canal. The finger on the, on the cheek is particularly helpful if you have a moving target, such as in a child. Uh, Mary, as I'm here, I want you just to turn your head towards me now. You can see how that helps to be able to um, be aware of the movement and control so that you don't uh, traumatize the inner portion of the ear canal uh, with the speculum.